Well, restrooms are good, right? That's just the women's is good and not the men's. Is that right? All, both of them are good? Oh, okay. Well, I guess you guys can use the restroom back there now, so that's good. I told everybody it's just the women and the men can use this restroom, but anyways, you guys got your Bibles open to uh, Revelation chapter 3. Uh, we'll go ahead and just dive into our, our study. I'm excited. Lord, thank you again. Uh, we do pray, Lord, that you would uh, open up our hearts to hear uh, what it is you're speaking, Lord, and uh, give us those ears to hear, those eyes to see, and uh, Lord, encourage our hearts. Lord, uh, allow your word uh, just to steep down into our hearts and, and uh, just allow us to take it in. And uh, Lord, to dwell with you with understanding, Lord, I think is, is so important uh, instead of just hearing and then uh, not doing anything with it. Um, help us to understand your word, Lord. Grant us your wisdom, your knowledge, Lord. Um, Lord, that we might be able to minister to others uh, with what we've been ministered to by you. And so, uh, encourage our hearts, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Actually, guys, let's pray one more time. I don't know if he wants you to, guys to know yet, but um, Dean, I'll just skip all the information, but was in the hospital, and um, they, they, they pulled a whole bunch of toxic water and stuff out of him, and he, of course, he's just witnessing to everybody. He probably saw like 100 people and, and uh, telling them, you know, and the doctors and everything, and just... Uh, Judy was able to give him, you know, homemade food instead of the food at the hospital, and uh, but he's going to be released tomorrow, Lord willing, and so um, let's just pray one more time for him. Lord, thank you uh, again, and, and uh, we do want to pray for, for Dean, Lord. We do ask that you would uh, comfort his heart, Lord, encourage him as he's there. Uh, and and uh, Lord, that you would just continue to be with the doctors there and uh, continue to grant them uh, insight, Lord, and wisdom, and, and that they would uh, be able to use the knowledge that they have. And uh, Lord, for healing, I pray you would bring that healing touch. And it sounds like everything's good. And so I just thank you for that. Um, I just pray you would just comfort him, but use him, Lord. If he's even talking to somebody right now, Lord, that your gospel uh, would go forward, and, and uh, Lord, that hearts would respond. People would get saved, Lord, and, and they would come to faith in you. And so um, minister to him, Lord, as, as he's ministering uh, to others, and, and um, just thank you so much for him. Be with Judy, Lord, give her the grace that, you, that she needs, Lord, in, in ministering to him and uh, encouraging him, and, and uh, just give her the strength that she needs. Uh, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, well, if uh, you guys have your Bibles open, let's go to Revelation chapter 3. Um, actually, guys, we're at the last church already. Isn't that crazy? Seventh church, we had Ephesus. They were the loveless church. Uh, we had Smyrna, the persecuted church, or the, the suffering church. Uh, we saw Pergamos, which was a compromising church. Thyatira, the, the corrupt church, Sardis, the dead church, uh, Philadelphia, the faithful church, and now we're entering into the last, the seventh and final church, uh, and this is Laodicea. So let's go ahead and read Revelation chapter 3, look at verse 14. It says, And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans writes, These things says the Amen, the faithful, and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich in white and white garments, that you may be clothed, uh, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, therefore be zealous and repent. Verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if anyone hears my voice, and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne 
as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And so this church, uh, Laodicea, is often referred to as the lukewarm church. And remember, these churches um, really to, you know, seem to be addressed all kind of the same way, yet different, right? Where uh, Smyrna and Philadelphia, if you guys remember, they didn't receive any condemnation. Uh, and that this church of Laodicea, they don't receive any commendation, right? They're not going to get any kind of pat on the back from the Lord. They're not going to get any, hey, thumbs up, good job, you're doing this, you're doing great. Uh, it just seems like it's all condemnation, right? God is condemning this church uh, because their trust isn't in him. And we're going to see that. And so if you're taking notes, let's, let's look at some information. In verse 14, uh, we're going to see three bits of information here in verse 14. Number one, it involves an angel. Notice in verse 14, and to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans writes. And you guys remember, an angel uh, is a minister, is a messenger. These are intelligent beings that live amongst us. They uh, dwell among us. They're in the spiritual realm, uh, but they also can be a transformer and transform into the physical realm. If you guys remember there, in, um, uh, I forget where, uh, with Abraham, you guys remember God was there and the angels and then and they're talking and Abraham's telling Sarah, oh, go, go make some food. And, and they're talking and communing with, he's talking with the Lord, but also with the angels. And so uh, they were there in the flesh. They look like us, right? They actually look like me. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> what if I'm an angel, guys? Isn't that cool? What do you think? No? Yeah? <laughs> Don't talk to my wife. All right. Um, but, um, yeah, they, 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 they're intelligent beings. Don't, don't think that we're the only ones here on, on this world. Um, so, number two, it involves a city. Look at verse 14. It says, And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write. Uh, by the way, Laodicea, do I get a picture? No. Um, is basically uh, like one of three cities kind of together. So you got Laodicea, you got uh, Colossae, uh, which is actually uh, located about 10 miles to the east. And then you got Hierapolis, which is about six miles to the north. And they're the ones that have the, the hot springs there. And so Laodicea, by the way, it's a compound word. Leo, speaking of people, and and Decia, or you know, meaning justice or judgment, and so it seems this people of Laodicea uh, were were perfectly content in judging themselves, basically, right? In other words, they didn't need any outside governing uh, influences or anything like that. They didn't need Rome to care for them. So it seems that they were uh, a city that was self-sufficient. They, they, they were living in luxury, we would say. They were very wealthy. And so, by the way, pop quiz, um, did you guys know, and I just said it, that Laodicea was the most wealthiest city or church, if you will, than all the other churches? Isn't that interesting? So if, if you're driving to Beverly Hills, this is the Laodicea, right, <laughs> from all the other churches. You got the Mexico over here. You got the Beverly Hills over there. You got, right, they're all different. Uh, but Laodicea was the very, very wealthy, wealthy, wealthy one. So um, it, it was the central main hub of the banking industry of the area. Uh, I guess we can say it was like the Wall Street of the day, right? And so they were so rich that they, um, they had an earthquake. Actually, they had several earthquakes, uh, but Rome wanted to come, and, and uh, you know they paid for all the other cities nearby, gave them money so that they can rebuild all their buildings because they got they just got smashed just like recently in Turkey, um, and Laodicea rejected their offer for their money and said, "We got it ourselves. We can handle. We can rebuild our own buildings." And they didn't need any of the outside influence uh, or Rome's help in that sense. And so that just speaks of how, how much money that they have, right, which is pretty neat. So they're also famous for their medicine, uh, a Phrygian um, powder mentioned by Galen, which was an eye salve 
uh, meant for like healing your, your eye vision. How cool is that, right? I, wear, I don't like wearing glasses, actually. I wouldn't mind spraying some of that on my face, and that'd be amazing. But they, they would use uh, that in their temples, the temple of uh, Asepius. And uh, you guys remember the, the, the god of, um, they basically had the pole with the snake on it, right? And so they did a lot of archaeology digs, and they, they found some of these temples and, you know, offering stuff up to their gods and this and that. But they're also famous for their textile industry, producing this black wool cloth. Uh, they were really known for their black, um, the black wool that they had. They had the black sheep. In fact, today... Uh, they still are popular for black sheep there in their area in Laodicea. So that's interesting how it's kind of still going today. Um, but let's go to number three. It involves a person, a person, Jesus Christ, right? Look at verse 14. Um, he is the amen. He's the amen in verse 14. It says, these things says the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. So he is not the or a or it. He is the amen. In the Greek grammar, this is, this is huge right here in the Greek language. The word amen, uh, you know, simply means, you know, so be it, let it be so, or I agree, right? Um, but everything we say when we say amen is, is everything Jesus is, basically, right? And everything that Jesus is, is everything that is good. And, and in fact, it could be speaking of a very deep and intense uh, worship and praise onto Jesus, which is amazing. In fact, turn with me to Revelation chapter 7, about a page over or two to your, your right. Revelation 7, look at verse 11. Revelation 7, 11, it says, All the angels stood around the throne, and the elders and the four living creatures, and fell on their faces before the throne, and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Notice the word amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might, be to our God forever and ever. Amen. So since amen, uh, it's, a, it's a picture again, of worship and praise as well. And in fact, in Revelation 19, verse 4, it says, "...in the 24 elders and the four living creatures, they fell down and worship God, who sat on the throne, saying, what? Amen. Alleluia." I love that. So understand, when we say amen, it's really a picture of praise and worship unto the Lord, right? Why? Because he is the amen, right? So in a sense, we're saying, Lord, thank you for everything we just talked about in our request or our petition or in our intercessor, or whatever we're praying for, right? Uh, we're, when we say amen, we're saying I agree, but we're also saying we're, we're, we're praising the Lord because of who he is and we're, we're pointing it back to him in a sense, which is amazing. So it's not just like a period at the end of a sentence, right? Uh, it means so much more. Uh, it's part of appraising and worshiping the Lord for who he is, which is amazing. Um, so not only is Jesus the amen, but secondly, uh, he is the witness in, in verse 14. It says the faithful and the true witness in the greek grammar by the way uh, the definite article proceeds uh the the word witness so in other words it, he is the witness and, and so he is the one who bears a record one who testifies of an event and 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 there are two things that jesus is uh, I guess you could say bearing a record to or, or, or uh, testifying of, right? Uh, number one, he is faithful. He's testifying that he is faithful and bearing record of. So him being the one who bears record, him being the one who is the witness, him being the one who bears uh, testimony, all involves the fact that he's faithful, right? And that's why we can always rely upon him. Why? Because, well, he's faithful, <laughs> That's a That's a superpower, guys. Isn't that cool? You ever hung out with like a superhero? We, God is our superhero, right? He's always faithful. 
uh, no matter what. In fact, in 2 Thessalonians 3.3, 3, it says, but the Lord is faithful. There it is, straightforward. If you're like, where did the Bible say that God is faithful? Well, there you go. Um, and uh, I'm super thrilled that his faithfulness is it's not dependent upon myself, right, in my performance and who I am. In fact, he is faithful in spite of who I am. I don't have to become a performer, be, you know, do something for the Lord's faithfulness in my life. Um, so uh, we, de- we depend on him, right? We count on him. Uh, we, we, we trust in him. Uh, in fact, in 2 Timothy 2.13, it says, If we are faithless, he remains faithful, he cannot deny himself. And so this church was doing so well, uh, they, they seem to have been putting their faith in their riches, in their wealth. They're putting their faith in, you know, the material things, the things that they had, uh, the work of their own hands, we would say, and they're not putting their faith in Jesus. I mean, it, it became so comfortable. I think we can understand that, right? Where life can get so mundane and traditional and church is just, right, you come, you go, you do this, you do that. You did your service in a sense, uh, but but then it, then you're not, it, all of a sudden you're not walking by faith anymore. That Now you're just doing stuff because, well, you're the whatever title at the church, right? And that's just what you do. That's what you're supposed to do. And, but it's no longer on to the Lord. And that's what the church of Laodicea is doing. Uh, and so let's keep going here. Number two, he is also true. He's also true. In verse 14, it says, These things says the amen, the faithful and true witness. Uh, in John 18, verse 37, Jesus says, uh, I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Uh, Revelation chapter 19, verse 11, Jesus, it says, is the faithful. He is faithful and true. Uh, and in John chapter 1, uh, 14, Jesus, uh, well, he's he is the word of God, right? Not only is he uh, the way, the truth, and the life, John 14, 6, uh, but he is the truth. And so, obviously, right here in Revelation 3, 14, he is the amen. He is the truth. He is uh, the one and only who is faithful. And and so we have, guys, uh, we have the Bible. Uh, this is our this is our absolute truth right here, right? We have the word of God. And we need to be very careful um, in, in trusting in self, uh, self-motivation, self-education, self, all this, right? Uh, self, uh, you know, my, your own thoughts even, your own hearts. You got to be careful to be led. It, lead, it could lead you astray. Uh, and it's very, very scary. We, we need to trust in the word of God, right? Uh, there's some people that, you know, I could hang around and they'll be like, oh, What's the need? Oh, I trust in my, let's see, my bank account. Oh, I got it. No worries, right? I, we're good. Instead of the other person that says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trust in the Lord on, on his promises, right? And his word says, what is that? They're, they're walking by faith. The other is walking by sight, right? And they're trusting in the material things and the wealth and the, the, the people, right? And, and so what God is doing here is he's rebuking Laodicea, and I hope he's rebuking us, because if you're like me, uh, guys, there's areas in my life that I don't realize where it's like, man, I thought I was trusting you. Apparently, I was trusting in that, or him, or them, or, right? And, and we fall short. And so uh, what he's telling Laodicea is, guys, have zeal to repent. Have zeal to turn, Right? And, and how, how thrilled are you to turn back to the Lord? Some of us are slow at turning back to the Lord, right? We love our sin so much that we're like, oh, I need to turn back to the Lord. Mm, but I'm going to take my time. Oh, look, ice cream, right? <laughs> we're so quick to go into the things of this world. Uh, but when it comes to the Lord, we're like, I know, I'm coming, I'm coming, right? We're like little kids. Get over here. I'm coming. Oh, look, a rock. Oh, squirrel. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're constantly distracted. And so Jesus says to the church of Laodicea, have zeal, right? Turn back. Look to me uh, in all things. And so he is the true uh, and one, and we ought to be looking to the word of God. Uh, but he's also, number three, he is the 
beginning uh, in verse 14. Notice the middle there, or the end of verse 14, the beginning of the creation of God. So Jesus Christ is the originator, if you will, of everything, right? Uh, it, because in the beginning, God created everything, right? And John 1.3 um, says that Jesus Christ created everything. Wait a minute. So God created everything in Genesis, but wait a minute. So John 1.3 says Jesus created everything. Yes, because <laughs> he is God, right? Uh, because Jesus Christ, he's God Almighty come in the flesh. And so Jesus, if we would say, is the agent by which God created all things through. And, and so understand, um, Jesus Christ is also over all creation. In fact, the Bible says in Colossians 1, 15, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. In other words, he's, he's above all of it, guys. He's got it. In fact, in, in verse 17 there, it says, and he is before all things and in him all things consist so jesus is the creator jesus is the sustainer of all things he's holding all things together i think it's hilarious if you guys watch tv or listen to scientists these days you know they know that this world something's holding this world together everything that we see right everything they, they, they know like, what is holding it together from flying this way and that way and blowing up and exploding, right? And so they, they, they coined the term uh, atomic glue. They're like, I don't know what this is, so let's just call it atomic glue, right? Uh, but we know, obviously, right, who's holding it all together? Jesus. He's sustaining all things. He's holding it together. He's got it all. Uh, Isaiah says he uh, holds... The, the basically the universe and the, the, the span of his hand, right? Right here, there's the span, uh, which is amazing. Um, and so think about it, guys. If that's the case, and I think we all agree, how do I say this? We all have issues, right? We all have things that are going on in our lives. Some of us have family issues uh, at home. Some of us have financial issues. Some of us might have medical issues, right? Physical issues. Some of us might have all those issues altogether. Right? But he is so much greater. He is holding it together. He is on the throne. He is ruling and reigning. He is, he is all powerful, guys. He is faithful. Ain't that amazing? So whatever you're going through, he's in charge, right? I think it kind of changes your perspective a little bit uh, from the things that you're going through, and it's easier now to look to him, because if he's holding it all together, um, can't he hold it all together for you, right? Can, can you trust him to hold everything together? Kind of like Pilgrim's Progress, right, where the burden, right, you're traveling through, and you're, you're being distracted, but you want to stay on the same route, but you're holding that, that burden, and, and God wants you to cast your care, all your cares before him. But Lord, I really care for my family. I care for my son, my daughter who's not saved or, or is saved. And I care for this and that, right? Cast it, your burden, right, onto the Lord because he cares for you, right? He's got you. You know, it's so easy for us to to trust the Lord for our eternal life, isn't it? Like, yeah, Lord, I love you. I believe in you. I know you're God Almighty. And I know if I just put my faith in you and I die, if that's right now, I'm going to be in your presence. And guys, we have like this much faith, right? And, and, uh, but when it comes to today, right, our practical things that we're going through, the phone calls that come in, we're like, whoa, what? And, uh, are we trusting in the Lord? Are we casting our cares to the Lord Practically, are we following the Lord uh, practically, right? Uh, the, for the here and now, that's where the challenge comes in. And I challenge you guys to continue to look to the Lord, right? Continue to trust in the Lord. Don't be like the Church of Laodicea. I, when I when I uh, hang out with other believers, I kind of see some of the churches. I'm like, all right, you're like Ephesus, you're like Smyrna, you're like Thyatira, you're like. Uh, right? Um, Sardis, you're like uh, Philadelphia, you're like uh, right here at Laodicea. We got a lot of them. Uh, they're the ones that play church. They love church. They're churchgoers, 
uh, but they're unwilling to actually trust the Lord. They're unwilling to embrace the Lord. And sure, they may have done it at one point, right? They're the church, but they fall into this lukewarm state, right? This, this, uh, this state of mind of like, eh, like, I don't really, life's good. I'm just going to, you know, you're looking to stuff instead of the Lord now. And so it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's horrible. <laughs> don't look to your riches. Let's go to the second thing. Let's look at the, the condemnation now in verses 15 to 17. Um, remember, they don't get any commendation, right? They're, they're not getting a pat on the back from the Lord. The Lord's not going to say any of the positive stuff. Hey, guys, you're doing this very well. He's just jumping into it like, uh, you need to be corrected. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but if I, I remember as a kid, you know, you, you're looking up at the clouds and life is just amazing, right? Life is wonderful. And, and all of a sudden you hear your name, Joshua, get over here right now. <laughs> it's like, oh, right? Did you do this? Uh, yeah, I did that, right? It, those who correct you are those who love you, right? And so that's what the Lord is doing here with Laodicea. He loves them. And so he's correcting them. He's rebuking them. And, and so uh, because he loves them. And it's a, it's a beautiful thing. Um, so the first thing I see here is Jesus, he, con he condemns them as it pertains to their works here in verses 15 to 17. Notice he says, I know your works. And this is a phrase that he's been saying to all the other six churches, right? I know your works. But the thing is, when he says, I know your works, this word works, by the word is the word edo. I don't got it on there, but um, meaning he knows, he has a full understanding, a full knowledge of everything that they're doing. Some of the churches were doing works that were positive, right? That were good. They were literally doing works onto the Lord, not onto man. And, and so uh, here with the church of Laodicea, God says, I know your works in the negative sense, right? You guys are doing stuff, but it's not on to me. You're, you, they're the ones with the camera, right? Check this out, guys. I'm going to go give this homeless man some food. Hey, you want a burrito? There you go. All right. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Subscribe, right? <laughs> that, you know, Jesus is saying, you have your reward, right? There it was. That's, there, that's it right there. Uh, but we, as believers, what do we do? Don't let your right hand know what your left hand's doing, right? Go to your prayer closet for things. When you bless others, bl bless, but don't read, don't tell everybody about it, right? Don't sound the alarm, the trumpet, and the parade. That's what the Pharisees do, right? They, they, uh, you know, they're like, doo, 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 here I look what I'm gonna give, and they're like, one, two, whoa, three, wow, right? Don't do that, right? Uh, and that's, that's another reason why we don't pass plates around here, because some people actually love the show, and, and they even, some people would want to insist, like, okay, I would love that hallway to be my name, actually, and I'll give this much money, right? I want my name right there, and it's all about them. Do you guys get the idea? Christianity is all about abandonment. It's about abandoning yourself and your self-esteem and your interests and all about you so now your worship is no longer about you yourself and you it's your prayer life is not about you it's all about god's will being done right literally if you have that abandonment heart if you literally come to the cross every day you pick up your cross and you follow jesus meaning you're you die to self you look to the Lord, you are grateful that he died on the cross for your sins, right? And he rose again. He's entrusted you. He's, he's, he's getting, indwelled you with power to go forth and speak his word. Guys, it's amazing. It's the best thing in the whole wide world as a believer. But as a Christian, if you're not picking up your cross, you're going to be all about yourself, right? That's where the conflict's coming in your, 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 your relationships with others, all right, because it's self's getting in the way. But when your self is out of the way, you're blessing others. You're preferring others, right? And it, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful, you know, people love being around people like that. It's good. Uh, and that's how it should be. But anyway, so this church, notice he says, I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit, bleh, right? The word vomit, by the way, do you guys want to know what? I got a picture. You guys ready for this? Okay, I don't got a picture. I'm not going to do that. 
But really, here it is. I'm just joking. Vomit is the word. It's, it's in the, um, it's, it's almost like with Jonah. You guys remember the, the fish, right? It wasn't a, a, a female fish, right? It was a male fish. The females, when they vomit, it's not even the word vomit. I don't know what word that is. They go, mm, right? What do the men do? Rawr! It's all over the place, right? So that's kind of the wording here. It's the same thing like in Jonah, uh, where the, the, the fish, uh, you know, just threw Jonah up, like, completely. It was disgusting. Anyways, um, I know your works, that you're neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I, Jesus says, will vomit you out of my mouth. Jesus is condemning their works for not being cold nor hot, right? They're, uh, they're apathetic. And, and so, therefore, Jesus is going to vomit them out of his mouth. Jesus, he always uses the, you know, his surroundings around him, right? Uh, whenever he's teaching, if he sees certain plants, he's going to bring it up in his teaching. If he sees some sheep or animals, right, he brings it up. Don't, you know, uh, lots of examples there. But uh, here, it's the same for this church because Colossae is about 10 miles, uh, you know, to the east at the base of the, of the mountain there. And, and normally, that mountain is, you know, snow-capped up there to where the snow, you know, kind of melts and it comes down, enters into the, the rivers, and, and so it's icy, you know, cold water, and, and it's good, right? For the people that are traveling by, they're drinking that water, it's a refreshment. If you're traveling, you're exhausted, and it's like, yeah, this is so good. Um, Hierapolis is about six miles uh, north, which is, you know, low elevation, about 18, 1,800 uh, um, uh, feet above sea level, so it looks like a little little hills are covered in snow, and uh, but really it's actually calcium deposits from uh, the the hot springs. It's not snow at all there in Hierapolis. So I I don't know about you guys. I love hot springs. I love I love hot tubs. Right? Uh, there's one on Marketplace right now. It's actually called Hot Springs, and I'm like, oh, I want it so bad. It's free. <laughs> I used to do that. I was in that business, so I used to, I know how to gut it out and replace everything, where it's like, oh, it's killing me right now. Um, but, um, uh, so, Laodicea, they, they had clay pipes, and that's kind of what that picture is on the top right, um, where, you know, water would be pumped in both from uh, Colossae coming in really cold, and from Hierapolis coming in very hot, and, but by the time it got to Laodicea, it was lukewarm. In other words, it wasn't good for anything. It wasn't hot for your tea. It wasn't cold for nourishment, right, and just refreshment. It was just lukewarm, like, right? Um, and so uh, they didn't care. That's the idea, right? Jesus says, I'm going to vomit you out, right? You're, you're lukewarm. The idea is they, they didn't care about anybody else. They cared about themselves. They trusted in their own wealth, right? They were a self-sufficient city. They had plenty of resources. They had plenty of money. And, and so they became lukewarm as believers. And I, I think, guys, here in Wisconsin, I mean, we got it made, right? The, more than lots of places around the world, uh, we are pretty comfortable. It doesn't matter how poor you are, how wealthy you are. I mean, we got it made. We got homes that we're in. We got vehicles we're driving. We're wearing, you know, clothing that's very upper class than a lot of other people in the world. Uh, and we got more than one outfit, right? Uh, if you're considered, you know, having two outfits, I mean, you're pretty wealthy. Um, so it's, it's, we're pretty blessed and we got to be very careful though, uh, you know, not to trust in the things that we have, not to tr put our confidence in, in the material stuff or in our own wallets and, and, and trust in that. Cause guess what? How many banks have shut down already? Have you guys been keeping track of any of that, by the way? I was going to give a little update. I've been having issues with video. I wanted to do some video stuff, but uh, a lot of banks have been shutting down. I don't, we might even be in the very beginning of a recession, guys. There's a lot of stuff going on, a media takeover, all this stuff, right? The violence that's escalated like crazy, the, uh, the wars, rumors of wars, Russia and their nuclear, right? The North Korea and their nuclear this and that and what the possibilities, right? Don't trust in, like Jeff just said, right? Don't trust in our government. We trust in Jesus. It's so, it's so sweet to trust in Jesus, right? It is. It is so sweet. Um, and so 
uh, we, we got to be very careful. We got to watch our hearts lest we become lukewarm and uh, rely on those things. So uh, again, we're to be, you know, living that life that's an abandonment to, from this world. We're to be alienated from this world, right? We're not of this world. They should look at you and stare at you and be like, uh, who are you? <laughs> In astonishment because you're so different. That's what Jesus says to us. If God can come right now in the flesh, right in front of you, look you eye to eye, one thing that he will say to you is be holy, like he is holy, right? Come out from among them. Be ye separate, says the Lord of hosts, right? And that's what we ought to be. We ought to be living a different life. I don't know how many people, um, man, we, we come across different families and, and uh, not anybody here specifically, uh, but... It just breaks our hearts that there's other believers that are out. They, they proclaim the name of the Lord, saying, yeah, we're Christians. We love the Lord. We're involved at our church. And, but they, they live no different than the world, right? Their, their, their tongue is no different than the world. Their eyes are no different than the world. Their ears are no different than the world. Their hands and feet go and touch the things that are no different than the world. Guys, we ought to be different, right? We ought to be set apart on the Lord. Is he worthy? Is he worthy enough for your life to be lived onto him? Right? Think about it. Consider the Lord. I'm talking to myself as well. We all make mistakes, right? We, we fall short of the glory of God. We're not perfect. But the thing is, is he worthy enough to get back up and have that zeal to run to the cross, to run back to the Lord? Right? Are you being convicted uh, by the Holy Spirit when you're doing certain things? Right? Because his children will be convicted. They will, right? Because you're his, which is a beautiful thing. So never feel bad about that, by the way. Never, like, oh, why, why does this happen just to me? It's all of his children will hear him, right, and be convicted. It's a beautiful thing. But um, I can't stress that enough. I want to just encourage you guys um, and, and uh, anybody listening, uh, we, we ought to be different. It really breaks our heart. It's not fun. Uh, on certain things to see people. But anyways, let's come to the second area Jesus condemns uh, besides their works is their wealth. In verse 17, their wealth. Notice he says, because you say I am rich, have become wealthy and have need of nothing and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. You guys remember they were very wealthy. Um, uh, I forget. I think it was 60 A.D., uh, that's when the earthquakes happened, right? There was one big one, and another one came, and just all of their buildings just collapsed. The pancake, whoosh, and and that's when Rome said, "Hey, here, how much do you guys need? Here's some money." And Laodicea is like, "Hey, we we're self-sustaining. We're good. We're wealthy. We'll take care of ourselves. We'll rebuild on our own." And and so they didn't need Rome. They were trusting, if you will, in their own power and their own wealth right and and they thought you know they had it made they had the hospitals they had the banks right they were they were the the wealthiest city in the area uh, but spiritually they were bankrupt right they didn't have it made and and so they were trusting in all of that stuff but there was there was nothing wrong um there's nothing wrong with having that stuff uh i mean we can have stuff right we can have material things but just making sure that the stuff doesn't have you. You have it, right? In other words, oh, no, yeah, I can't come to church tonight because I bought this, you know, and I got to maintain it, right? I got to do maintenance on it. So I really wish I could come to church, but oh, man, right? I'm so dragged down by my stuff, right? I can't go anywhere. With this, but the Lord's calling you on this mission trip, right? Maybe the Holy Spirit's speaking to you and like, hey, I want you to go here, but I can't. I, I got this, right? I don't know. I'll let you guys know how dumb I am. Um, I remember the Lord speaking to my heart and saying, come, come follow me, right? Uh, and I immediately looked to the person I was with, my sister, and I was like, hey, let's go. And, and I looked back, it was, it was actually like a dream, uh, but I looked back and the Lord was gone, right? And, it, and then I woke up, and, and what did he, in my devotion, right, I'm going chapter by chapter, verse by verse, it was forsaking all and following him, right? When he calls, you need to just go, right? Follow him. If he says, leave your family, leave your friends, leave everyone, forsake all, and follow him, are you willing? 
Oh, but Lord, this new car I got, right? <laughs> right? Oh, but my fancy aquarium, I mean, uh, you know, whatever, right? We, we got to be very cautious with that. So anyways, there, there, there's nothing wrong, again, but about having all that stuff. But the church of Laodicea, they trusted in all that stuff. They were wealthy physically, but spiritually they were poor. And so, uh, you know, what, what profit is it if you lose your soul and you have all that stuff, right? It is no profit at all. So the real profit is investing in the things that matter. And the things that matter are the things that are eternal, right? And so um, don't put your trust in, you know, your, not only your resources, but also your abilities. Don't put your trust in yourself and the things that you can do. Um, you know, again, I always think of uh, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. What, what does it say? Trust in the Lord with all your hearts, right? Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways. Acknowledge him, and he shall, he will, he promises. That's something you can hold to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm going I'm to stand on this promise that you will direct me. You will guide me. Because I'm trusting in you and you alone, right? Not my stuff, not so-and-so, right? And he's got you. So it's a beautiful thing. So it seems that, you know, again, we, we, can, we can easily trust in the Lord for, you know, eternal life. But how about right now, right? How about tomorrow? How about when you hear that word, you're fired? <laughs> or you see the fire in your house and the whole thing burns up, right? How about then? Are you still trusting the Lord, right? And, and so we, we ought to, right, prepare your heart to trust in the Lord, no matter what comes down. And so let's finish with, let's look at the exhortation. This is the last thing uh, that we see here in verses 18 to 22. Um, Jesus is going to exhort the church of Laodicea uh, to do five things specifically. Number one, he exhorts them to buy, uh, to buy in verse 18. Notice he says, I counsel you to buy from me interesting he exhorts uh you know to to the exhortation to laodicea is to buy from him not from the, the their banks or their hospitals or their temples or their whatever right uh but he tells them <clears throat> to buy three things specifically number one the first thing he tells them to buy from him is gold refined in the fire that you may be rich Right? They had physical gold, they were very wealthy, but they didn't have spiritual gold. They weren't, they weren't uh, investing spiritually, if you will, looking to the Lord. And it's interesting that people put their trust in the, the physical things, but they, they, they lack the spiritual things. Right? They're not an investor spiritually. They're not praying for others. Right? They're not ministering unto others. They're not seeking the Lord. They're not going further in their walks with the Lord. They got comfortable right? Like, oh, I, I, I'm not used to going and giving the gospel, so I'm not going to do it because I'm not used to it. No, that's not an excuse, right? We got to, guys, we got to step out in faith, right? Step away from our comfort zone and trust in the Lord. And sometimes it's not comfortable. <laughs> sometimes you're in the fire, right? But it's not your will being done. It's his will being done. And so, the, you know, it's interesting because the, the health, wealth, prosperity gospel, they say, you know, if you're not healthy, wealthy, and prosperous, then you lack faith. Is that true? No, not at all. In fact, if you walk by faith, what I've noticed, sometimes you're not healthy, wealthy, and prosperous. <laughs> what, what is it to, well, here's what the Bible says. Matthew 16, 26 it, Jesus says, for what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? For what will a man give in exchange for his soul? So you can have all the physical stuff you want. doesn't mean a thing. You've lost your soul, right? If you've given your, yourself away for that stuff, it's not cool. So the second thing to buy was white garments. Notice it says, in white garments that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. So they had very costly wool uh, from the black sheep, right? They were very popular, n known as, you know, Laodicea uh, in their day uh, of having that. So they, they might have had, the, you know, the $5,000 black suits, right, and looking fancy. Um, but uh, in their hearts, they, they were black, right? They were dark. They, 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 didn't, they didn't have, they weren't pure, they, they weren't doing anything unto the Lord. It was all self-sufficiency, right? And all, proclaiming themselves. And so the word white right here speaks of 
purity. It speaks of righteousness. It speaks of holiness, right? And so Jesus is telling them their righteousness is, well, it's not based on their performance, right? You're not made holy by what you do, right? Just because you did this or that doesn't make you righteous, doesn't make you more holier than any of us. So um, it's it's the righteousness, obviously, uh, that Christ has imputed to you and I there at the cross, right, because of his blood, that you and and I are now made and proclaimed, declared, if you will, righteous in his sight because of what he has done. That's where our faith comes in, right? We look to him and we just trust, Lord, you're, you died on the cross, right? It's not about us. But Lord, I did this and I did that and I was used by you in this way. What, what is that, right? You guys remember on that day, he's going to tell several people, I don't know you, but I did this, I did that, I, I said this, right? But I don't know you. Right? I would rather trust by faith, Lord, you did this, and you did that. You said this, right? Your word says this. What is that? That's holding to the promises of God's word. It's walking by faith, right, and trusting in him, and it's a beautiful thing. Uh, in fact, um, 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. And so it's all about Jesus. It's not about us. Amen? Yeah. All right. Um, you guys are awake? All right. All right. Okay. Uh, the third thing to buy in, in verse 18, is, it says, And anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. So remember, again, Laodicea was really famous for their medical uh, eye salve, if you will, right? To help their eye vision uh, to see better. And so this powder, they would rub it on their eyes and, 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 and it would help them you know, clearly see. But Jesus is saying um, that you might be able to clear your eyes with that eye self and, and help you know, to see physically, but buy from me so you can see spiritually, right? They're looking into the physical. Remember, their mind is all on what they see, not on the Lord and spiritual, anything spiritually. Uh, and so 2 Corinthians, I think it's interesting because it says... Uh, in 2 Corinthians 4, 18, while we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And so um, I think of, uh, oh, is it Elijah uh, with his servant, right? And, and he's, they're in the tent, right? And they, he's just panicking and going crazy and and, but he's looking at by physically, right? He's, he sees the army surrounding them, and he's like, oh, we're going to die. And Elijah's like, oh, Lord, give him ice to see. And, and then he looks, and then he sees, and he sees all the angelic hosts surrounding the army. Right? And, you know, if God is for us, really, who could be against us, right? Uh, or I think, of, um, I think of Peter, right? You guys remember uh, they saw they're there on the Sea of Galilee, and the the waves are going crazy, right? The storms just raging, and 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 then they see Jesus out there, right? And Peter's like, "What?" And, and then he asks to go walk out to Jesus, right? And he's looking at Jesus, and he begins to walk and do the impossible. He's walking on water, and then he gets slapped by these waves, and he, so he looks down, gets distracted, and what happens? He begins to sink right? Because what is he doing? He's now no longer walking by faith. Now he's walking by fear and stress and, right? He's, he's, he's frightened and right? just like, ah, and he's, he's looking at the things of the flesh, the things of the physical. And so we're to walk by faith, keeping our eyes on Jesus. And so we need to keep that uh, e- eternal perspective, right? That God is in control. Uh, and I, I understand the, the, the physical, right? Um, I don't know how many times I talked to you guys about this, but I remember being blind for three days. That, that whole time period when I was out of it for four uh, months, three days, uh, the Lord took my vision completely out. It actually hurt to see any kind of light. I had to have it pitch dark, uh, and, if, and if you know, I couldn't really see a thing, but if any light like hit, it hurt so bad. Like my Something was going on with my nervous system. Uh, and but for three days I was like you know tr- try using the restroom right <laughs> like what is that? ah but it hurt man when my vision came back though I was so thrilled I was I literally thought I was gonna be blind all my life I was like all right that's that's my that's it I'm done 
but I was going to trust the Lord no matter what. I was like, all right, Lord, this is the next phase that you want in my life. I'm still going to follow you no matter what. And then he's like, it was just a test. Here you go. Whoa, I can see. It was amazing. Um, but so that's the physical anyways. Um, so when we, when we, guys, when we focus our attention, you know, on the things of this world, the, 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 the storms of life, if you will, it's going to drag you down, right? It's going gonna, it's gonna to really mess you up. And that's why, let's say you're, you're caught up in the hospital. And don't set the focus on yourself and your infirmity. Don't set the focus on the sickness. Set the focus, keep it on Jesus, right? The enemy might allow certain things. The Lord might allow certain things. But it might be a, just a test, right? Do you really trust in the Lord? Or do you trust in self, right? Some people love self so much that they, it's woe, it's the Weenie the Pooh, or no, who is it? Yeah. Or it's like, woe is me, right? And, and uh, right? everything is just sad and sorrowful, and, and, and uh, that's the flesh, right? It's not of the spirit. We got to keep our eyes on Jesus in all things. Um, anyways, um, and if we do, obviously, you're going to be doing the impossible like Peter. Not only does, does he exhort them to bite, you know, but, but secondly, he exhorts them to repent. Notice in verse 19, he says, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, therefore be zealous and repent. So this church was apathetic. They, they were not trusting in the Lord. They weren't keeping their eyes on Jesus. They, they're looking, you know, with their physical eyes. They needed to repent. Because of that, God needs to chasten them. He needs to discipline them, right? And as he does... Um, they, they, they're not going to become apathetic anymore when they're being disciplined, when they're being punished, if you will, right? It's going to keep them on their feet. It's going to keep their eyes back on him. That's why certain people are always in the fire, in a sense, right? They, they're always, you know, it's, it's a, the, the, the prayer is always, Lord, help, right? Because it, it's a reminder for them to depend upon the Lord. The others just have it. They're like, Lord, I love you, and I depend upon you, and I don't need fire, right? It's, it's something interesting. Uh, but uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 6 says, For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. I think the Lord loves me so much, and some of you guys so much. Amen. <laughs> Thanks, Lord, so much. Uh, the third thing, so let's go to number three. Jesus exhorts them to open. Uh, notice in verse 20, he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone, oh, I love that, by the way. If anyone, isn't that cool? The, the, it's an open invitation to anyone. I love it. Um, hears my voice and opens the door. I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. So we need to be open in our hearts, right, to the Lord, uh, and by the way, that, that's, it's on us, right? He, he gives you the choice to open. He's not opening the door. He, he wants you to open the door. Whether you don't believe in the Lord or you do believe in the Lord, it's your opportunity. It's your choice to open the door and choose to open your hearts to the Lord, if you will. So uh, be willing to, you know, walk through any door that the Lord might open, uh, even if it seems awkward or, you know, it's not always pleasing in your sights. Remember, again, thy will be done, not my will, right? Um, so we have free will, and, and since this church was wealthy, they, they knew, you know, how to eat, and so God is relating to them, right? They, they knew how to dine, right, and, and chill out, and, and, and they're all about going to each other's homes and eating together and fellowshipping, and, and so he says, you know, let's, let's you look to me and let's do it together, so Jesus also exhorts them to overcome. Notice in verse 21, To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. Uh, again, we, we, we talked about overcoming on most of the churches. Um, 1 John chapter 5, verse 5, right? It's because we believe on the Lord Jesus that he is God Almighty come in the flesh, right? He's 100% God. He's 100% man. Uh, the deity of Christ Jesus, but it's by faith that we believe on him. That's why you've overcome. And so when he says to those who overcome, that's what he's talking about, right? You're going to be able to sit with him on his throne, speaking of authority. And one day we will. We're going to be judging uh, the, 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 this world, if you will, the Gentiles. And it's going to be interesting. We'll get into all that stuff later. Um, but 
Jesus, he encourages this church also to hear. Notice in verse 22, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So the Spirit is telling this church specifically uh, not to trust in their wealth. But notice it's plural, right? Not just having an ear to hear what the Lord is saying to this church specific, having an ear to hear what God says to all the churches right so all seven of them look back over them re-examine them and hear what the lord is speaking to your heart because you might just you know be one of those churches or a mix of them i don't know <laughs> but let, let's pray guys lord thank you so much for this time uh we do pray lord that you would continue to encourage our hearts to to trust in you lord to walk by faith and not by sight lord to um lord to to pursue you uh, with all of our hearts to be holy lord to be set apart lord we don't want we don't desire to be like this world uh, lord teach us train us give us eyes to see and ears to hear lord that we might be different that we might be pleasing in your sight rather than being pleasing in man's sight and lord help us to be content with where you called us lord uh, not to be complaining and not looking to the other side and being like, well, what about them? <laughs> What's it to you, right? Uh, Lord, help us to look to you uh, in our own personal walks with you, Lord. And if you call us, Lord, to, uh, to ministry, Lord, in any way, specifically, uh, any shape or form, uh, Lord, help us to, to listen and obey, to trust in you, Lord, to walk away from our own pursuit our own uh, whatever degrees we have, our own education, our own whatever it is, Lord, our own reputation and name that we've given ourselves. Lord, help us to be willing to literally forsake all and follow you and trust in you. Uh, keep us from being uh, comfortable with the things of this world, Lord. Shake us up, Lord. Shake up our foundation and knock down uh, any walls, any, any barriers, Lord, that we've set up of our own, uh, trying to build up our own kingdom, uh, Lord, and, and rebuild, Lord, the things that you desire to rebuild. And uh, again, Lord, uh, help us to be open uh, to what it is that you're speaking to our hearts on. And uh, be with us, Lord, as we go our way. And uh, I pray, Lord, you bless the time of fellowship and help us, Lord, to continue to draw near to you, to spend that devotional time with you, that quality time with you. And uh, Lord, that you would just continue to uh, build us up, Lord, um, and restore our hearts, Lord, restore uh, what the locusts have come in and eaten. And uh, Lord, keep us from the evil one, Lord. Hold us together. Thank you that you hold all things together. And uh, so we offer you our hearts as well, that you would hold our hearts together. And uh, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Guys, if you've got any questions, come on up.